Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren. And I'm Lindsay. And this is Swing Mamas. <laughs> Swearing Mamas, because that was not audible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back again. And we promised poop. Yes. So. The dreaded time of potty training. So since you have actually been through it, and I have not. Okay, then I'll let you start us off. All right, so potty training. My son always waits till we are recording to hammer the wall. Um, The wall needed hammering. Yeah, well, now it's my window. Um, Yeah. Potty training. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, potty training. With with Tim, I um, was really in no hurry. I didn't want to rush him. Um, We tried when he was a lot younger, and it just did not go well. It was... I think in like an hour span, we went through like six pairs of underwear. I was like, I am not ready for this and he is not ready for this. So I just put it away. And um, so I really like was very relaxed in that sense. Um, My son's daycare lady actually is the one who did pretty much all of the work. (laughs) Um, she was like, um, Tim is the only one in daycare that isn't potty trained, like, beside the babies. So you need to, like, bring underwear. And I was like, whatever. So he would be fine at daycare. Like, he would literally not have any accidents at daycare. And then he would close the freezer. What are you doing? At first, I was just trying to figure out how the freezer <laughs> played into potty training. Yeah, I have a freezer that has, it's at the bottom, and you, like, pull it out, so he opens the freezer all the time for popsicles. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So, my daycare lady really did all the the hard work. Um, I have an ulcer under my tongue, so pardon if I have been talking strange. Um, (laughs) You're good. Thanks. (laughs) It hurts. (laughs) Um, So... She did a lot of the work for me, um, but it would be like he would be great at um, daycare, and then he would come home and accident right away. Or it was, like, terrible. So he was potty trained at daycare, and then at home he would come into a pull-up and be in a pull-up. And then on weekends he'd be in pull-up, and then he'd go back to daycare and be fine. Um, A couple weeks ago – You talking to my school? I'm not talking to your school. A couple weeks ago, he um, actually started doing it at home as well. Um, We tried the potty watch that I mentioned a couple episodes ago, um, and he liked it, but then he learned how to turn it off. So then it would start singing, and he would turn it off so he would know that you couldn't hear it and um, wouldn't remember to tell him to go. Um, So the potty watch worked kind of, but then didn't. Um, so yeah, he, um, I guess right now we are pretty, I want to say 95% potty trained. Um, we're still not through the night. We still do pull-ups at night. Um, but most part for the day, he does great. We go to trivia and he, for the past, I want to say like almost a month, hasn't been in a pull-up while we were at trivia and he goes to the bathroom there. Um, so he also does it, like, in the car, he's fine. Nap time, he's fine. Um, but, yeah. I would just say don't stress over it. Um, and don't pressure your kid to, like, do it. You know what I mean? Like, there's no really, in my opinion, there's no really, like, st- as long as they're potty trained before they go to school kind of thing, like, actual school, like, kindergarten, um, I don't think there should be a time frame, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, if they can, like, sense that you're pressuring them to do anything. They rebel. resist, yeah. Exactly. Like, I mean, it's 
I mean, I'm like that, and I'm yeah, 27. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> don't tell me to do something because I won't do it now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, okay. Um, what kind of like? So you said she did most of the work, but for you at home, did you like try any specific method? Like any of the. So originally we did the whole like M&M's thing where he would get like two M&M's if he went pee and then like you up it for if he goes number two. Um, He still doesn't really go number two on the potty. He would much rather put a pull up on and go, which is a whole nother topic. Um, My child is scared of his own poop. So like when he poops in like a pull up, like you have to like immediately when you take the pull up off, like move it to the side because he doesn't want to see it or touch it or anything like that. But I'm like, if you go on the toilet, that ha- like you don't have it on you. So we're now trying to get him to go poop on the toilet as well. But that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I never heard of a kid being afraid of poop until my other friend also named Lindsay. She does listen. Hi, Lindsay. Uh, told me a funny story. And I now like your name. Too. Yeah, so it's kind, of, it's kind of funny that both of the Lindsays had those stories. It's the first time I've heard them. That is really funny. But, yes, my child is scared of his own poop. It's like <laughs> I don't know why, and I don't know what provoked that because it, he was fine for, like, the longest time. And now it's like he's like, Mommy, you need to move it. Move it. And I'm like, <laughs> child, I literally just took it off of you. Calm down, please. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's my experience of potty training. I mean, I'm still in it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to start the overnight thing. Um, because that's a long amount of time and I still give him, uh, a cup of whatever he wants before bed just to keep him in bed because that's a whole nother issue. So I don't know when that transition will happen, but I will keep you guys updated. Yeah, this will definitely, this topic will definitely be one that we talk about again, whether it's a whole episode or whether it's just in passing because you're still working on overnight. I obviously have the whole journey to go through, so, (laughs) um, but I like that. I like that we get to share, I like to sometimes that we don't always have to share retrospect, but that we can be in it and talk about something. I just think it's interesting. Real fun. Yeah. So my thing that I mentioned last week um, was that I was looking into learning elimination communication, which I don't like that it rhymes and we're going to call it EC in this episode. I don't like rhymes. Um, (laughs) It's like as a songwriter, I don't like rhymes outside of music. Um, But no. So um, I did look into that, but I also read a little bit in a potty training book that I have because it has a chapter on EC, but it, I thought it was going to educate me on how to do it, but it actually didn't. It was about EC and potty training. So I'll get to that too. But so I did read up on potty training and uh, I think that was useful because, um, I kind of came up with my own like game plan that we're going to start initiating, but first let's just like talk about EC. So, um, What it is, is it's learning your baby's cues so that when they have to go, you're essentially catching them. Um, And you're going to, like, either put them on a little potty that's nearby or take them into the bathroom. But basically, kids, babies who have EC are never in diapers, really, except for maybe at night. Um. I wish I had known about this a long time ago because uh, whatever I was re- I read up on, these kids start EC at like a month old, some of them, two months old. Um, and I think it would have been a lot easier to have started it then than now because, um, you know, your baby isn't mobile at that stage. So it's really – and they, you know, they feed – they're just like sleeping and feeding. So I think it would be a lot easier to just stare at them and learn their cues when they're little. Uh, but I just had never heard of it until recently. So, um, what I learned is we are kind of on the older end of starting EC, but we're not outside of the realm of possibility. Um, 
And kind of the same thing goes for potty training. We're a little bit before like the norm, but not outside the realm of possibility. Um, so um, basically we're going to start a little bit on the EC this week. I didn't get, I didn't have time to do it last week uh, because you need to really pay attention to your child. And I was getting a lot together in my life. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing with potty training. It's it's a it's a lot of work. Yes. Like you literally have to they say like you can do it in like three days if you look at like Pinterest and articles and things like that. But it's Loaded like it. those three things, like those three days, you literally have to stay at home. You can't leave the bathroom. Like you literally need to be at in the bathroom. And yes. I'm like, I just don't have the time for that. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, don't buy into those like th three day methods or those like boot camp methods. Um, like you, I also don't believe in like putting any pressure on the child to potty train. Um, so right now what we've done is we do diaper free time sometimes. Um, it all started really when he had like a diaper rash and I just wanted to let him air out. Um, but then after that, I realized, well, I used one or two less diapers today. I knew he, I know he poops in the morning, so I knew he was probably not going to poop and it was just pee and it did not like, I put pants on him or whatever. So it didn't get on the floor or anything. Um, so I was like, yeah, well, we'll do that. You know, I don't do it every day, but fairly often. And then also like, I knew that it's a way to start making them aware that they went. Um, so I thought that would be a good thing too. Um, and it, that kind of feeds into potty training, which the book that I read is the, is Oh Crap Potty Training something something, but it's called Oh Crap is the first part of the title. Love that. Um, yeah, it's, I did not finish it, but what I read, I really enjoyed. And she also, um, what I liked a lot about the author is that she does take a pretty much like middle of the road approach, like how you and I do about so many things, which is, you know, like here's the effort you can make, but don't make it into a big show. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we've been. Um, but starting Monday, I am going to work on really getting down easy, which is, like I said, it's about me learning his cues. It's not me teaching him anything. It's just him, really me teaching myself something. Um, since he is older, that first day of EC is probably going to look exactly like your first day of potty training. Um, if you were to take this method, like she talked about in the Oh Crap book, which is that you, your child is naked <laughs> and you watch them all day. And she says you literally don't do anything that day. She says don't do the laundry. Uh, don't check your emails. Um your job today is to like watch your kid bond with your kid and like learn their cues and you'll learn a lot in that day she says you know about like how often they pee do they take one big pee or five little peas um you know and what do they look like when they're gonna pee and all these different things so um during that first day uh that's that's what you're doing because you're watching them um learning their cues and catch as much as you can so you want to keep like a potty nearby and, um, you know, if once they start to go, you sit them on the potty to catch it. And it does say, you know, like it's a stressful day and it's an exhausting day. So she, she says in there something about putting wine in your Cheerios. So I also, I like this author. Um, but anyway, so, um, basically that's the goal of the day and that when they go on the potty, like, so they're going, you stick them on the potty and they finish peeing in the potty and then you congratulate them. You say like, Oh, good job. Um, so that's kind of the first day of potty training for her, but it's also kind of what starting EC would look like based on what I read at, with an older kid. So, uh, that's, what's going to be our, uh, day Monday. And I know that's this episode will come out Monday night. So, um, send me supportive tweets maybe because it's going to be a long exhausting day um and she did mention a little bit about like what the cues might look like which is that they'll get like a deer and headlights look they'll often stop playing or stand still um but she says you know some kids have like very obvious p cues and other ones their cues for peeing are 
a lot more subtle versus like <laughs> when kids poop, it's like it's a when more said, obvious. Cue. When you said PQs, I was thinking of an acronym, and I'm like, oh, what does PQ stand for? <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like that. It's like there's no way to not. It's like neither of them are the letter though. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so yeah, that is going to be our day uh, Monday. And um, my, my goal here is, like I said, to just start easy for my sake so that I learn his cues to just cut down on diapers and to just sort of lay the groundwork. Uh, the goal really for me is not to potty train him, but... I do want to start incorporating some of the elements of potty training because, like I mentioned, he is older. So in the book, she says the ideal age for potty training is 20 to 30 months. And she says before 20 to 30 months is possible and after 30 months is possible, but that it's easier to do it before than after. So, um, yeah, she says, you know, you just have to be patient if you're doing it before or after that time frame. You just have to, it might be harder. It might be take longer, you know? Um, but again, like one of my big things here is just saving diapers. So I thought, well, why not give it a go? Um, so <laughs> we're going to try it out. And when I say incorporating like pieces of potty training, what I'm talking about is I'm going to teach him the sign for P. Um, and then they mention like, when they go when they're on the toilet making a sound like pss. uh I actually have already done that because I have sat him on the potty a bit here and there in the past like in the mornings before a nap different times he did pee once um so that kind of like sound is something I've already done a little bit so I'll can incorporate that and I'm going to teach him the sign and other than that it's going to be mostly about me learning his cues um but it will have those like similar elements to potty training in that, you know, I'm communicating to him what's going on. And it's also about telling them. She says to like really explain yourself with everything. And um, one thing that I found really interesting was that she says that, so she says that like a lot of her clients will say like that they don't say anything negative to their kid, which I was like, yeah, I don't want anything negative to happen on potty training. But she said it's actually good to, um, to like list the negative and the positive expectation for them, but that you can just say it in a calm way. So what that would look like would be like if your child poops on the floor, you say, oh, we don't poop on the floor, we poop in the potty. And so that's really that, simple. You're saying like, this is what we don't do, this is what we do. That reminds me of a hilarious story. Please tell. <laughs> so... um. When Tim gets out of the bath, he likes to do a dance where it's just like him, like just jumping from leg to leg, like jumping and like Cute. shaking <laughs> while he's naked. Um, so the one day he got out of the bath and he was like, I'm going to go um, show daddy. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So he runs into our room. And this one we lived in our old house. So we had hardwood floors and it was fine. Um <laughs> He runs into our old room and is like, look, Dad, look at me. And um, he trusted a fart and he shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> and legit shit on the floor. And I died laughing. My husband was mortified and I'm just sitting there <laughs> laughing so hard because I'm like, oh, my God, he trusted a fart and he shouldn't have. <laughs> like, he learned that it hard the hard way. That's hilarious. Uh, it was so funny. That, that is really rough. funny. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah. So basically, just not scolding them, but stating the expectation. Which I know, I think you and I both kind of agreed. Like you should never scold them. And the book talks a lot about not making it a big deal. Like um, the first day of potty training, I think she says to the kids, like, because this lady potty trains kids as a, for a living. She says like. Um, okay, like we're gonna, we're not gonna use diapers anymore today. We're gonna use the potty. And she says to like never ask them questions. Don't say, do you need to go to the potty? Say, we're going to the potty now. Um, so there were a lot of little tidbits like that that I picked up, even though I didn't finish the book yet, um, that I will incorporate into my little transition here. Um, 
but yeah, because Oliver is 16 months right now. So I think it's not too early, but it's too early to expect him to just get it. Um, so he's old enough to connect dots. I just don't know if he'll necessarily get that yet, but it's entirely possible with learning the cues myself first. So basically like my expectation is Monday we do the naked day um, and I will continue to pay close attention to him throughout the week, whether he is naked or in a diaper or what. Um, And then sort of like just take a very relaxed approach for the next few months. If he shows some progress, we can work it into potty training. If not, then sort of keep doing the EC, but at 20 months, since that's when, you know, she says that it is recommended to start, that gives us four months. And I think that's a lot of time for me to make progress um, in in learning him. So at that point, we'll really do like the full potty training method, which is again, like she's got a whole book about it. I couldn't tell you the whole thing. I didn't finish it all. I just read it briefly. Um, it is really interesting and it, it talks about potty training as this like different chunks of progress that you make. Um, so that would be us like getting through the first chunk almost. Um, and then I will continue to use diapers, of course, at nap time and bedtime. Um, and one thing she mentioned too was to not just periodically sit them on the potty, um, but just to do it like when their cues are, but that you would, I will still offer the potty before nap first thing in the morning at those times when I know he might have to go. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, and really like when we transition into that lesson is going to be about when I'm comfortable because one really big takeaway that, uh, struck me a bit when I was reading was that potty training, the entire effort should be on you as the parent and not the kid because they're just learning like another skill. Like to them, this should just be learning another skill. So like you don't stress your kid out to learn the alphabet. You don't stress them out to learn, you know, their colors or whatever. Like that's, they learn in the way that they learn in the time that they learn, but you have to make the effort to teach them those things. So I guess reading that really kind of like shifted the perspective for me because I know that when kids are older, they can resist more. They can, um, you know, sort of push back and control the situation in ways that a younger kid might not. But I think it's easy to just like place potty training entirely on the child when really it's not always, you know, the most of it is the parent. Cause like what she says in the book is like, you don't have to teach your kids to go to the bathroom. Like they know how to do that. You're just teaching them where to do it, (laughs) where to put it. (laughs) So, um, it was a cool perspective change for me. Um, I'm not really like, full on on any one type of parenting. I guess that's probably been clear through this show. Like we did not cloth diaper. Uh, to me, it was something I was just not prepared for. Not, you know, I don't think that I could have like necessarily handled it, but I think now where I'm at now, um, I could, I could handle this. Um, like, cause we'll, we'll probably move into training pants instead of, uh, diapers for during the day after I have picked up on the EC a bit. So, like, I think I could handle that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that was interesting because um, I didn't really realize there was another option. I always just thought it was cl- cloth or disposable diapers. And um, I just wish I had known about this sooner. Uh, but now that I do, I do want to try incorporate some elements of it just, you know, for the planet. And also just because I think it's cool. I think it's interesting. And I think it could possibly make potty training easier. She does mention it might not. So like, that's good to have that perspective too. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I think that was, I don't know. I just thought that was all super interesting. So I was excited to gain that, um, perspective. Yeah. I liked that because it, <laughs> I, I had never heard of it. Yeah, so it, sounds a little, it sounds a little crazy. I know that. I know some people are probably like, this girl's crazy. But um, to me, I'm just like, well, whatever. It's worth a shot. I mean, if it gets us out of diapers, diapers are expensive. They are. <laughs> um, if it gets us out of diapers, why not? And it's probably more comfortable for him, too. Um, 
But yeah, another thing that I thought uh, was interesting or that I wanted to mention on the podcast is that I read, um, she said that a lot of parents will come to her and say that they're waiting to potty train until their kid is ready. And she said that it's just kind of like doesn't make sense as logic because you always teach your kids things when you feel that it's time to teach them. You don't necessarily wait until they're ready to teach them the alphabet or to teach. You don't wait until your kid's ready to start reading books to them or like any skill or any type of developmental, um, I guess skill, whatever. I don't have words <laughs> thing that you teach your kid. Um, like you don't, you don't wait for them to signal you on. You uh, decide to bring it to them. And she said, you know, no one knows your kid like you. So if you think that they're um, capable of that, then they're ready. It's not, you don't have to wait for them to give you any kind of magic sign that they're, that they're ready to potty train. Um, So yeah, I just thought that was interesting too. Um, So we're going to, we're just going to see how it goes. And I just don't really have like any sort of expectations about it. It's just going to be something we try. I like that you try things. Thank you. Yeah, I think You're it's the more adventurous perfect. one out of us both. <laughs> well, I just like, you know, it's pee. I'm not worried about I'm not worried about it. You say that now. We'll talk again in a couple weeks. <laughs> I don't pee doesn't bother me like cuz like I said he how he has gone without diapers a few times now. He usually pees in the clothes and it's like his pee isn't doesn't like smell weird or anything like you know he's so little it's like doesn't really have much of a scent or anything so I mean it will suck if he just was like totally naked just pissing on the floor a lot (laughs) but I just mean like the fluid itself doesn't like disgust me the way that like poop is gross but I think that is easier for us just because he poops at a regular time but I'm not going to be naive because she does mention that they will change their poop schedules on you when potty training sometimes because like babies or let's just humans in general, it's like natural to poop when you're relaxed. So a lot of the time they'll start pooping at nap instead, not intentionally, but just because that's when their body's relaxed. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. And I am really excited to update you guys on that (laughs) but yeah that's kind of where we are now anything to i i really believe like in making things sort of feel natural uh in parenting in general like i just think people make a big deal out of things they don't need to you know what i mean yeah no i know what you mean of course, potty trading, sometimes a big deal gets made out of it. It's not that we make a big deal. It just gets made, <laughs> you know? Things don't work out or whatever. Sometimes it becomes a bigger thing than what we want it to be. So just, I just, I, with nannying, babysitting, daycare, all of these things, like I've dealt with a lot of kids who are extremely difficult to potty train. That's why this has been on my mind <laughs> so early. Yeah. I'm not really looking to be advanced, but just to, like, do what I can for myself to make my life maybe a little easier, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe harder. (laughs) We're about to find out. Yeah. I wish I would have looked into more different things, but, you know. It is what it is. It is what it is. You're right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I spent, like, a full day after researching, like, why didn't I know about this sooner? Because they make, um, like, some, like, you know, those little potties, they make, like, newborn inserts. Like, you really can start it from the beginning. I just never had any idea. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, anyway, that's everything I learned, and that's the game plan I sort of came up with, and, um, Yeah. Peeing and pooping. Yep. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. And kids, I can't tell you the number of times recently that I've seen a kid just piss randomly. So, like, my expectations are not are not unrealistic. Like, yeah, when we go into play dates and stuff, I mean, there's pee on the floor. <laughs> my child peed in Bath and Body Works. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's funny because when I worked at Bath and Body Works, a kid peed under a fixture and I had to clean it. Oh, thankfully there was no puddle. It all went into his shoes. But <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah. He looked at me and I was like, okay, we got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> have you, like, seen those online? They'll have uh, – they keep a potty in the car. Yes. Thoughts on that? I um, only think that would work well if you have an SUV. Yeah. Because, like, if I keep a potty in my car, where am I going to put it? Or yeah, I put that it in my trunk. Like, you know what I mean? Like, an SUV has a nice big trunk that, like, you can literally put the child in the trunk to use the bathroom, you know? It's like mm-hmm. I would have to put the potty on the outside of my car to have my child pee in it. Yeah, which think. wouldn't be ideal. No. so We have a crossover. So it's small, but it can fit a potty in the back if and only if there's not, like, a stroller or something in the back. Yeah. Um. I don't know if we'll do that or not. I did see where they put a diaper underneath the thing so the diaper catches it and you just throw it away so you don't have to clean it out or something. I don't know. Um, I feel like there's so many – everything I read, they're like, keep a a potty in the car. Keep a potty in their – next to their bed. Keep a potty in – and I'm like, we have two different bathrooms. I'm like, how many freaking potties do I have to buy? Yeah. I suggest just getting, like, the toilet seat cover thing for, like, your house. Like, one bathroom is the designated designated, um, potty training bathroom. And just buy one of those. It's, like, a essentially, like, a toilet seat. But it fits on top of your toilet seat. It makes it smaller yeah. for kids to sit on. That would be the easiest thing. And just get, like, a, um, like a step stool. See, I was going to get one of those. I was literally, like, about to buy them right before I read this. And then she said that you can use those, but then you, unless your kid can get up there on their own, it doesn't, like, they're not going to go to the bathroom on their own. Like, they're going to have to go and get you. So I was like, well, he's still small. Maybe when he's bigger, I'll get that because, uh, yeah, I mean, as you, with those potties, you have to clean them out. Oh, this is just a seat. It's not like a potty. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like with those, she's saying they can't get up there on their own. If oh, they're small. okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I definitely think those are preferable. But I don't know. We're borrowing a potty right now, so I'm like, I feel like I need to go ahead and get my own so I can give this back to her. But um, I just like. I don't know. I haven't made the decision. It's a Mickey one, and when you pull the side, it's look got like a thing flush thingy what are those called what do you flush the toilet with a flusher is that what it's called <laughs> i have never, no idea it's a uh thing the handle what is it that's I just got... called the handle is it called the handle i mean i think so all right tweet us guys what is it called <laughs> i just googled it it's called the well that's called the flush valve but that's not what the it is called a handle Yay! <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> that made me feel like. Have you ever had those moments where you're like, "Holy shit! Did I not know what that was called my whole life?" Yeah. <laughs> anyway, when you pull it, it says "Hip Hip Hooray!" Oh, I love that. Super. We just cute. had a boring potty. It didn't say anything. <laughs> but now you have the seat. No, now he just uses the regular toilet. Oh, okay. We never he's, got the seat. He's big enough now to do it on his own. Can you get off of me? Go! I'm talking to my cat, not my child. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, on me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, does that wrap it up? I think so. There's so many, like, thousands of things. I mean, we'll definitely probably probably talk about this again. Definitely for sure. Like, I don't know what next week's episode will be, but I will fail you guys in. Yeah. I can't adventures. And everyone can laugh at me if it goes crazy. Like, <laughs> to be quick, I have to be clear. I'm not one of those parents that's like, oh, well, we figured out something before you. Because, like, I am never going to think that. If I haven't been through it yet, I don't know shit. Even if I've babysat and nannied kids who are potty training, like, I don't know anything. All I know is <laughs> a theory. <laughs> so, no one ever think I'm that mom. <laughs> All right. All right.
So tip of the week? Yes. So I do not know about Apple products, but Mm. for Samsung's electronics, there's a kids mode. And uh, it's now on the Galaxy phones. And it's also on, like, the tablets. So, yeah, you can just turn on kids mode and you can um, download different apps. Um, and then it also has its own camera so they could take pictures in, but also like you can add pictures in for them to look at if you want, but you have to select them. So like if you have some sexy photos on your phone, don't worry, just, they won't be able to see them. Um, and same to like music and videos. So, and then it also has its own apps. So like, I think he has like the Legos app that I added in, but it also came with like, a sound recorder and a drawing app and different things and it's basically just looks like your normal phone screen but like with colors and cartoons and stuff all over it. it's like the kids version so kids mode has been a really nice help for me when we're like in the grocery store or things and he's getting ridiculous um so yeah i would definitely recommend that kids love mode. that so the apple yeah. has um with the iPhone, what I do is there's something called, I think it's called Access Guide. Uh, one second. Guided Access. I was close. So when I triple click the power button, it gives you the option to turn on voice commands, essentially, or act Guided Access. And Guided Access locks them into the app that they are in, so they can't leave that app. So that's, that's what I good. do for them. Yeah, that's good. Because he loves surfing through all of my apps and deleting things and things of that nature so right but does he has he ever bought anything thankfully no um but it's also because i don't have like my um account linked with anything me either so and i never and that is the reason, that reason. Why. <laughs> yep yep i'll like, try to buy something i hear all the horror stories about people who um their children buy things on their alexa <laughs> i'm like i don't i purposely don't use my um echo for that reason cuz i don't want him to know that you can do that so we don't buy things with her we buy them <laughs> through our phone on the app and i mean i feel yeah. like i would never even if i I mean, I know I can do it. I don't think even if I didn't have Tim that I would do it because I want to see what I'm buying before I buy it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So for that reason, we do not use her for buying purposes. Purposes. Yeah. Guided access or kids mode. Those are good tools for when you just need a second for your kid to just shut up and take my phone. Just shut up and have it. Okay. You can have it now. It's fine. It's yours. Yeah. So <laughs> tweets. I'll go first. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, my first tweet is from Lizzie at sash underscore nurse mom. Um, she said, Yoda, may the force be with you. My three year old mom, why is the dog talking? <laughs> Cute. I'm relatable. Um, oh, not for them. For us, it's relatable. Today is May the 4th. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess you guys are like after that. Future friends. All right. Bun and leggings is back again. And it said she says, "Don't give parents hope by making them think that the terrible starts and ends at 2 because the terrible grows exponentially from birth." Accurate. <laughs> All right, my next one is from at Miss Tyler, 78. I can dislike you and love you at the same time. Parents of toddlers, probably. <laughs> feel that. Okay, yep. at Snarky Mommy, 78. Me, I need to get my shit together. My shit, not today, girl, not today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have um, at Wonder Parent and 007. Parent, so what's wrong with her? Me. I'm sorry, I have to say your daughter has the universally dreaded V word. Parent, nothing. Mary, me, nothing. Parent, nothing. Me, no, not that one. Virus. She has a virus. <laughs> <laughs> 
My last one is a snarky mommy 78 again, and this uh, doesn't have to do with parenting, but little known fact is you guys, I'm obsessed with koalas a lot. I really love them. She I is. have koala slippers. I have a very large koala and I think like three or four smaller koalas. I have a koala figurine, earrings. The list continues. So this tweet is for me. <laughs> she says, so apparently koalas sleep 22 hours a day and then wake up, eat, have sex, and go back to sleep. And now I'm fucking pissed I'm not a koala. <laughs> Accurate. Right? That is so also. Light. If you've never heard them fighting, go to YouTube right now. You YouTube that shit. They make the best sounds. And now I'm going to go there. It's so good. I would do my impression, but it would startle. It would startle you. So yeah, you just YouTube it. YouTube <laughs> koalas fighting, and it's like in slow motion. They're like not fully in it. <sighs> I, I love, love that I type in koalas, and fighting is the first thing that comes. Out. <laughs> I believe and there it. is a compilation that is a five minute video of oh koala God. fighting. So good. And probably no koala was injured in the video, so it's fine. Yeah, totally fine. Check. All right. All right. Well, until next time. Hold me. Hold me. Hold me.